Recently I came across this post by Preish Talwakar where he talks about this problem shared by Brilliant.org on Facebook. The correct answer is obviously option A that is minus 6 and nearly 42% people chose this. Preish himself conducted a poll with the same problem modifying the options a little bit and these were the overall responses. But after the changes, the problem became a little bit controversial and there is actually a way to opt in all the wrong answers in a correct way. Let's look at this weird result. Let's start from i equals root over minus 1. Just inverting the numbers, also known as invertendo, and taking a common square root for 1 and minus 1, we get i squared equals 1, which means minus 1 equals 1. Now this obviously is not correct, but what is the reason behind it? It's the third step taking a common square root. We often combine root over a times root over b to write root over a times b, but this is valid only for positive real numbers. So this way to obtain the wrong answer is also wrong. Just note that square root of 36 is not equal to plus minus 6. Though x square equals 36 means that x equals plus or minus 6, but the square root function actually gives us one value as all functions should give. Now the question still is what's the correct way to obtain the wrong answers? The answer actually lies in this really good but extremely ambiguous question. What happens when we raise negative numbers to fractional powers? We'll be taking the example of this instance where minus 5 is raised to the power 2 by 3. There are three possible cases based on context. If you take out your calculator and try to evaluate minus 5 to the power 2 by 3, that is 0 0.66, you'll get a verdict of undefined or not a number. It's because under the hood, the calculator uses a function a raised to the power x to evaluate any power operation. Now this function is defined for a greater than 1 and a less than 1 but greater than 0, but not defined for a as a negative number. That's why this particular case the function is undefined. The second case is x raised to some power. Here the base of the exponent varies keeping the power constant. x raised to the power any positive integer gives out a polynomial function. But the trickery happens when this power is a fraction. Notice for even denominators the function is undefined or there is no graph. Here minus 5 to the power 2 by 3 gives out 2.92. Now what happens when we cross domain barriers? That's where complex numbers come into the picture and what earlier was not defined now becomes defined. A complex number z has a real part x and a purely imaginary part i y. If we take the angle it makes with the real axis as theta and the distance of z from the origin to be r, we can write it in polar form as well. Now using Euler's equation we can write z equals r times e to the power i theta. I have a really good video of deriving Euler's equation from circular motion and if you find it interesting please do check out. Now let's talk a little bit about the complex logarithmic function. Using polar form, we can write ln z as ln r plus i theta. Next, we map the complex number z on the z plane to the function ln z on the fz plane. For each point on the z plane, we find the corresponding point on the fz plane. As theta increases, keeping r constant, we get the corresponding path in the fz plane as a straight line. Now, if we increase the value of theta by 2 pi, we see that in the z plane we land at the same point, but in the fz plane we reach a completely different point. Similarly, if we decrease the value of theta to minus 2 pi, we reach another different point. Therefore, corresponding to any single point in the z plane, the function ln z maps to multiple number of points in the fz plane. And this shows the complex functions can be multivalued. Similarly, if we take z to the power 2 by 3, a single point in the z plane maps to exactly three different points in the fz plane. And as you can see, minus 5 to the power 2 by 3 has actually three values. Again, taking the case of z to the power 1 by 2, that is square root of z, the point minus 1 in the z plane maps to two points i and minus i in the fz plane. 
This actually means root over minus 1 has two values i and minus i. Weird, right? Therefore, the correct way to achieve plus minus 6 as the answer to the original question is to take both values of square root minus 9 and minus 4. As we discussed earlier, function by very definition should be single valued and to resolve this ambiguity, we come up with the concept of principal branch. If one loop in the z plane doesn't result in reaching the same point in the fz plane, we limit the argument of z for that function, such that it restricts the function to take up different values corresponding to the same value of z. This concept is very similar to square root of x being the positive branch of this parabola and not the negative one. Now if you observe, the square root of minus 1 maps exactly to one point in the fz plane. Wherever nothing is mentioned in the problem, we always take the principal branch. Thus, the square root of any negative number is i times the square root of its absolute value. Using this, root over minus 9 becomes 3i, not plus minus 3i, and root over minus 4 becomes 2i, and their product is minus 6, which indeed is the correct answer.